Christoph, I have to start with an individual question for you. Um, I was a big fan of Alita, and every time we write about it, there there's just a lot of interest still with people wanting to see more in that story. And I'm just yes. curious um, if you get that from a lot of people as well. I do. I do. And and um, I, I appreciate that you're pushing it along a little bit. I thought that Robert did a great job with it. I actually really would like to see more in that world. Me too. Yeah. Jumping into why I get to talk to the two of you guys. Christoph, you don't do a lot of TV. In fact, this might be the first TV show in America, I think, that you've done. It so what is it? what was it about this project that said, I want to sign on and I want to play this role? First of all, the, the, you know the the times and landscapes change, and and television has taken on a, a another another and different role in society than it than it still had uh, three years ago or five years ago. So um, there there is that aspect, and then there is the aspect of if you really categorically deny that um, you could also work in television, you may not work at all, and and um, but all of that is secondary, tertiary, primarily. It's um, the the fact that. You go to people's living rooms. You go to visit people's homes with television. Whereas in the movies, you ask people to come to you. So um, it's it's a completely different approach, a different dynamic, which requires different stories, which I really haven't seen that much. Not that I watch a lot of television, but, you know, not that 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 there's there's nothing worthwhile watching. But, you know, it, in this case, it is something that I thought it would be really, really intriguing to visit people in their houses with that story playing that character. So things came together um, from different sides. First of all, I, I like the, the pilot because that's all I read in the beginning. But then I liked the people that I started talking to, um, you know, Tony and, and Matt. And and um, the the two real producers, and they were all pulling along in the in the same direction. So there was, you know, resistance was superfluous. Um, um, I ended up with them, and I'm happy to say I I um, am grateful for not finding enough reasons not to do it. Tony, I'm I, individual question for you. As the writer of all eight episodes, I'm so curious how you figured out where and when you wanted to reveal information in the series, uh, because as the audience is watching, you're trying to figure out what exactly is going on here. That's the job of the writer, though. It's, you know, you when you write the pilot, you throw all these balls in the air, and then you know you're going to have to perform the tricks and land them all successfully. So, yeah, there's... I mean, I, I work quite loosely in that respect. I kind of... I. Personally, I love the blank page ahead of me. I love to not quite know. I love to know where I'm going to end up, but not necessarily know how I'm going to get there. So it's, you know, information is revealed that strengthens each episode, you know. And so sometimes you may have 25 things in your head that you want to do, but you can only actually do 10 of them because that's what supports the episode. So, you know, it's kind of, it's finding the right things and kind of like making sure you know what the format is. Plus I've done a lot of TV, you know, I've kind of, over the years, you know, whatever, 25 plus years of doing this, I, I kind of got a sense of when information needs to drop and when you need to hold things back. It just feels, yeah, it feels quite natural. How much did you guys talk about Reg uh, the backstory of Regis? And because um, uh, there's information that won't be told to the audience, but maybe you wanted to figure it all out, you know, as an actor uh, to just know, do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. I don't see the real relevance, you know, and I also don't see the necessity to disclose that. But part of the part of the the um, intrigue and the allure is 
that you you're being kept in the dark about the backstory. I I love that moment in the in the story when they finally find where he's going home to. You know, I, I love that moment, and and that's in a way a little a little bit uh, a metaphor or analog to the thing with the backstory. I am curious. Obviously, with every um, when you go into pitch and you're trying to get the series off the ground. Many, everyone is always looking for multiple seasons. Can you tell more in a story? So when you were pitching it, did you pitch it as something, this is for you, Tony, did you pitch it as something that could go on for more than one season or was this designed as a one season type show? No, it was, I mean, we pitched it very much as this can go on and on, but we were very clear to say that it's not just a continuation. These are chapters, you know, it's, each season should reflect something in itself and stand for something in itself and have its own ending in a sense. What I didn't want to do is just let's get to the end of every season then have a huge cliffhanger and then we'll figure out what it is, how we're going to solve it later in the next season if we're lucky enough. It very much wasn't that approach. I think, you know, with someone of Christoph's caliber, we had to reassure him that, look, seasons are whole things. You know, each one you should look at as a novel in itself. You know, maybe we'll do a trilogy you know, maybe one is enough. Maybe two will be right. It's, I think we'll, if the material's there, then we'll, we'll continue. I don't think we don't have that same pressure of 10, 20 years ago of like, you need 20 episodes a year. You got to run for five years. It's like, that's not, it's just not the marketplace anymore. We don't, we don't have to pitch things in that way. You know, maybe, maybe the so-called industry is changing and maybe it's changing to the better. Have you ever considered that? I actually personally think that there are many shows that go on for far too long. I would be okay with with series that are just one season or two. Like Andor is going to be two seasons. As long as there's story, it should be told. Or it can be told, rather. Absolutely. Christoph, because this is your first time with American uh, television like this, what was it like for you working with different directors every week? Was it something that you enjoyed? Well, it, it, I, I, I can't say that I enjoyed it, I, I, but I can't say that I, I, I was um, averse to it either. You know, um, um, it's uh, apparently it's the nature of the thing, and yes, I would have, I would have preferred to have uh, uh, one continuous hand at it. On the other hand, there's a great advantage to shift. Um, angles to alter your point of view to have a new a new uh, touch um, you know a new a new wind blow through the thing so you know I can't say that I only see disadvantages um, I, I I understand the 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 uh, from the from the production point of view the necessity to to do it um yet you know it it is what it is and and i met fabulous fabulous people so right, advantages abound uh tony the series is eight episodes this uh, so far you know the first season the series um how did you decide on that number was it ever going to possibly be six or ten how, how did it get worked out I'm not sure we ever worked it out at all. I, you know, I don't think I ever went in there saying this is episode one, this is episode two. You know, there, there wasn't that clear a plan. I think you know, a prime video are in the business of making eight episodes for a lot of the things they do, and you know that was their suggestion, and it seemed to fit what we were doing. You know, once we'd sold it, we'd only had one script written, so it was a question of if they'd said we want ten, then I would have built towards ten. But the fact that you know we had an order for eight meant well that's a good chunk we can build towards eight episodes. I'm a big fan of your work. And I'm just curious when you are hypothetically filming a big scene on a Monday, um, something emotional or something that you know is going to take a little bit out of you, how early on are you actually preparing for something like that? Are you, um, is it like over the weekend? Is it weeks in advance? Could you tell me a little bit about your process? There's no there's no regularity to it. It's whatever whatever the scene requires, and uh, something that may look like terribly uh, demanding may not even be so difficult to pull off. You know, other things that that are look completely um, irrelevant to the, the 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 shine of the show may be 
immensely taxing. Um, so what you see is um, um, is not necessarily what's uh, going on to make it happen. Is it easy for you to let go of a character? Yeah. Yeah, you just don't do it. You know, it's like smoking. <laughs> smoking was easy to quit. When I I, I smoked, that someone said, you know, you, you have to just stop. It made sense to me, you know, whatever he said. So I stopped smoking. You know, it, uh, you just don't smoke. That's how you stop smoking. And the same thing with characters. You just don't do it. Uh, thank you both for your time. I hope the series is a huge hit. Uh, and um, have a fantastic day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.